dedication today represents the completion of the third major public safety capital project this year. As Tom uh, has said, this is the final of the four major public safety projects of this administration. We completed the fire burn building, the tactical response training center, the panic button system, which is going to be in every school by the end of the year or first quarter next year, and now this project on the EOC edition. People hate paying taxes, but they don't mind paying taxes when they know it's to protect their family, their friends, their loved ones. But they know when they go to bed at night that they're being protected, that people are on call, like our firefighters, our police, all our emergency personnel in Montgomery County. But they know that, that they are protected, that they are safe, and that's what people want from their government, and that's what Montgomery County government gives them. And we give it to them because of all of you, because of our volunteer firefighters, Welcome to the Hank Sisko Show, my guest here, and uh, I, I'm sure that you're very proud today of cutting that ribbon, <laughs> okay? Uh, uh, Commissioner Tom Ellis here, say a couple words there. No, I'm very proud. This is the last of four major public safety projects undertaken by this administration. We have a new tactical response training facility. We have a new burn building to train our firefighters. We have this new addition to the Emergency Operations Center, which will allow us to, to better handle 911 calls and to hire more personnel to do that. And we're putting in panic buttons in every one of our public schools. So I'm very happy. This just really caps the public safety uh, part of this administration. And, and lots of luck. You're running for state uh, treasurer, OK? Oh, thank you very I much. I want to get on our show, OK? Thank you, thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my good friend here, District Attorney, Montgomery County, and was just elected as Commissioner of uh, Montgomery County, and uh, Bruce Castor. Bruce, tell us something about this. this. This is a proud moment for you. Your whole life is, well, the whole life is, has been in law enforcement, and something like this is really an, an added, putting cream on the cake, right? Well, you know, Hank, we like to have everything in the cutting edge here in Montgomery County. We like to be the best at everything that we do, and in law enforcement, that's, that's no exception. Here, the commissioners have stepped up to the plate to provide us with this uh, specialized uh, uh, dispatch center, emergency center, and you know what? It's what county residents expect from us. Now, you're moving right into the commissioner, right? What, what a background, you know, law enforcement. Now you're going into administrative and make sure the money's spent properly, right? Well, there's a lot of things, you know, you can get, you can get a lot of things done as, as district attorney, and certainly I've tried to get, it, get those things done, but, you know, when you become county commissioner, there's a much broader uh, spectrum of things that, that you're responsible for, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. Hey, I'm proud of you, because I think your next step is going to be governor, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, first assistant district attorney and district attorney-elect. Okay, and tell us your name, because a lot of people want to know what your name is. You just can't remember my name, isn't that right? Risa, Risa Vetri Furman. Right, okay. That's right, Risa right, Furman. Tell us now, how, what, what does this mean to you, this building here? Oh, the, the building here, this is absolutely terrific. I mean, this is just a wonderful way to enhance the emergency services that we provide in Montgomery County. Uh, in the DA's office, we certainly work very closely with the police across the county, and, and all of the, the technology that we can give them is going to, to make Montgomery County a safer place. So you want to make sure you put them in jail when they, they bring them before you in court, right? Okay, well, we're not in jail yet. Right now, it's about responding to victims. Responding, well, and making sure that a good response and follow up and, exactly. and get them so it you... All, it all starts with the initial response. Everything starts with the initial response and making sure that the police and emergency responders have the tools that they need. Lots of luck. All right, thank you, okay, Rock. Right, thank you. All right, take care. All right, my guest here, I always like everybody to announce their own name and who they are and what they do, okay? My name is Bud Carroll. I'm Chief of Police of Lower Providence Township. And, and this building now is uh, in your township? That's correct. Okay. Tell me what, what this means to you. Uh, this, uh, this building, this entire project, I think is a testament to the commitment of uh, Montgomery County to public safety and to ensuring 
that the facilities and the personnel and the equipment that are available to the first responders uh, and to the emergency management community as a whole uh, are top, uh, top shelf. And I think if uh, one were to come into this building, they would be immediately impressed with, uh, with the commitment that Montgomery County has made to uh, their residents. In other words, this, this building, uh, the first responders, now tell us something about what you mean by first responders. Uh, first responders would be the police, fire, emergency, medical, police, so right? that's so you correct. Want, you want the best, right, when they get there. That's right? correct. And, and one of the key elements in uh, emergency response is communication. And that's what this uh, facility seems to be all about, that uh, not only is it going to be a secure facility, but it's going to be a comfortable s facility. Uh, there's going to be redundancies uh, for any failures uh, that may crop up. And uh, it's going to be uh, state of the art. It really is state of the art. Right. That's correct. Well, you, Chief, it's proud. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of you because you, you run a, a good Police department, and That's I'm right. proud of you. Okay, really I'm glad that I've known you for years. Fantastic okay. Cooperation from Norristown, so you right. should be okay. very, very Thank proud you. of your folks. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. Now we have some more people here that, that we, I'm going to ask them to tell us something what this building means to them and how it can be helpful. Okay. So I always say that you name, say your own name and what you do. Okay. <laughs> Randy, I'm on the police. You, you hold the mic. I'm giving uh, you full geez. control. Man. Boy, you guys are really tough. All right. <laughs> hold it close there. So okay, you can, uh, uh, the, now yeah. tell us who you are and, and what you do. <laughs> okay, I'm Randy. I'm on the police chief in Springfield Township. This is Joe McGurman, the chief, the chief in Lansdale, and uh, we're members. We're the co-chairs of the uh, police radio committee, the police chiefs radio committee, and we meet here on a monthly basis and uh, review uh, operations as it pertains to the police departments in Montgomery County. Uh, many of the police departments are directly dispatched out of this building, and those that are self-dispatched are on this system. In other words, this building, is, uh, it's given you a lot more, uh, what, what, what shall I say? Uh, oh, certainly. It, what's the hu it's the hub of the communication for the whole right, county. Communication, right? EOC. First responders, right? Exactly. Okay, you as a chief, okay, tell us what it means to you. Yeah, when I started as the police chief in 1997, Lansdale Borough had its own uh, radio room in Lansdale and we decided to move to the county and at that time the county was underground and yeah, it wasn't a I really <laughs> super facility but at this point I would say that Montgomery County has uh, done its absolute best to give us the best technology and uh, we're really looking at a, a state-of-the-art radio room that will help public safety in the future. And it helps not only with that with drugs and everything else right? Ambulance? It helps it okay, helps right? with fire just response, ambulance response, and all the police response. Okay, thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, my, my friend here for many years, we worked with him, we worked together at the county detectives, and now he's a sheriff of Montgomery County and just was elected for another four years. John Duran, okay, John, tell me something about it. This is really a, a good thing for you, right? What's happening here, Hank, is that we have uh, we have a number of things going. We have the bomb squad working out of here. We have our communications to the FBI. Uh, we have uh, communications with the motorcyclists, and we need them evacuation. Not only that, is that everything finally is under one roof. You know, when you when you have 600,000 people in a county like this of, of 557 square miles, I believe. It's hard to get all this information and keep it together. You got every call coming in here. We have our fire companies now can look at maps. They can uh, they can do uh, uh, tell you right where the street is. The ambulance has have G GPS that they tell you where the cross streets are, and it's just really wonderful. And someday we hope within seconds, within, within minutes, right? or, well, yeah, within minutes. But I also one of the things that's going to happen with the EMS side is we're going to be able to store our members. Uh, prescription drugs information and stuff in there so when the ambulance goes to there eventually what's going to happen is they'll have that right for the doctors when they go to hospital saving more lives so, so it's a, it's a wonderful the, uh, right right what's the, what's the thing Plymouth ambulance in Plymouth right. Township uh, which services as uh, uh, Worcester part of Worcester uh, Norristown West Norton East Norton Plymouth Township well John you've got a great career I know in you're one of the most respected uh, 
Oh, what do you say? And give testimony in court when you were uh, with the county detectives, and now you've been elected again as a sheriff. And so, and here you're, you're, and you're with this ambulance. You're helping people. It's the greatest thing. Well, there's no more reward when you can give back to your community right. and be a public servant. There's too many people out there. We need volunteer fire people. We need volunteer ambulance people. That's, uh, and I encourage everybody to volunteer and help their fellow man. Okay, you heard that now. Okay, so get in touch with John Durant, the sheriff, and you want to volunteer. Okay, we're going to go inside and meet some more people. Okay, thanks a lot, John. My next guest here, and I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Tell me who you are and what you do and, and why you're here. Hank, my name is Jesse Stemple. I'm retired from Whitemore Township Police. I now work for the county, and I've known you. We've been bobbing and weaving for 30 years together. All right, what do you do for the county now? I'm the law enforcement liaison for the county. What's that mean? That means I work down the academy. We do a lot of uh, the training stuff, and we do a lot of coordinating of some of the regional and mutual aid uh, programs that we have. Well, you look healthy, you know. Well, you that's look, all you that look bobbing and the, weaving, brother. How many years in the department? I had 37 with Whitemarsh. Right. With yeah, okay. I got two years with the county. Yeah, yeah, right. we had. It is a good department. And, and now, now you're down at the, uh, the fire academy, fire public academy. safety training campus, is that as we fire know. And police too, fire right? and police, public yeah. safety training. Yes. And they just uh, dedicated a building down. Yes, there, we it? just dedicated the new range, the tactical response training center. We just dedicated it uh, in September. Well, and, I'm glad that you got a guy right from the ranks. Uh, You've been, you have the experience and go right in there and help other people. That's great. Thanks, okay. Hank. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, I'll meet Fire Chief from Lowell Murray and Fire Department. Okay. That's right. Chief Charles J. McGarvey, Lowell Murray and Fire Department. What's your name again? Charles J. McGarvey. Okay. Now, what's this mean to you, this building? Oh, I think it's a great addition to the whole public safety you know, system in the county here. And, um, you know, it helps us all to work closer together and, and brings us into one. Absolutely. Communications between the different boroughs and municipalities has definitely helped us out. Uh, big step forward, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Looking very forward to work with everyone here. Okay. Thank you very much. So tell me something about yourself. Oh, my name is Joseph Timoney. I'm 82 years of age. I live in Winmore, Pennsylvania. I've been in the fire service for 64 years. I was home in leave when our ship was in port in New York, and my first fire was June 4th, 1945. A very serious mansion fire in Winmore. It took about 12 hours to put it out. We had, I think, five volunteer companies there, plus three companies from Philadelphia. What was the, the name of the it was the Lee Mansion, oh, okay. and uh, beautiful, large mansion, and it was rebuilt. It was a tremendous cost, loss. However, all the thousands and millions of dollars worth of art objects we saved, oh, okay. and there's very good pictures in our historical society of the flowers lowering the art uh, paintings off the walls, lowering them down over the banisters as the large roof and everything. What brought. do you think with the with this type of building and the, the, the technology they have here, would that have saved that place a little bit, or was it too far? Uh, what happened was, in those days, a lot of the uh, big estates hired people who retreated from Europe. Oh. And the lady on duty, the maid or the cook, I forget what she, she correct, could not communicate, had on Mr. Lee's with the large mansions around there, that one of the air raid sirens in Winmore was on the top of the roof. Uh -huh. And the maid pushes the air raid siren, thinking that that'll bring help. Uh -huh. However, in those days, you had a lot of trouble with the air raid sirens forced trickling. That was to do with the war. Exactly, right. air raid. And uh, the wires were short out, and the air raid sirens would go uh -huh. up at different times. So for a half hour, everybody thought it was short in the air raid siren until the chauffeur who had left Mr. Lee off at the train station came home and saw the column of black smoke. And that started the affair. It was about a 25-minute delay. Well, it just goes to show today with all the technology, and uh, this was a great showing here of uh, 
police, firemen, uh, or first responders, and uh, you know. And I see you got a badge here. That's the uh, county fire advisory board. You were in the Montgomery County Fire Advisory Board. In fact, a few years back, you had guest police and fire on from Europe, and I gave you a group a tour of the fire academy, and I always remember the female police chief of Liège, Belgium. I remember that lady. In fact, I got pictures of you and I up on the stage <laughs> talking to that. Now, that's been a few years ago. That's been going back. Well, no, it was great that I met a lot of friends here I hadn't seen in a long time. So, okay, congratulations and good luck. Okay. okay. In the refreshment room here, and my <coughs> next guest here uh, is someone that uh, I'm sure is happy that uh, this type of building has come a dream came true. So, Chief, tell us who you are and where you're a chief. My name's Mark Toomey. I'm the chief of police in Hatfield Township and for Hatfield Borough in Montgomery County. I am also on the Montgomery County Radio Committee with the uh, Police Chiefs Association, and we're very proud that we have this type of facility now to facilitate. Uh, emergency dispatch for police and fire services. And, and this means a lot, I guess, the police where you can hook up with ambulance and firemen, the whole bit, right? What's, what's it mean? How, how long have you been a chief or a police officer? I've been a police officer for 30 years. 30 years. And you're chief how long? Uh, four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. Uh, what it means is, you know, the difference from, the 30 years ago? from 30 years ago, you didn't have the uh, esprit de corps or the level of cooperation between the various emergency uh, management services that we have today. And this is what we're striving to do so that in the advent of 911, uh, we can uh, deal with all kinds of problems, whether they're terrorist-based or, or some other type of catastrophe that happens within our communities. That, that's a big thing now with the terrorists and also, uh, so now you, you have within, within seconds, you can uh, get more information that you had to wait a week for maybe. Absolutely, when I, when I was a young officer, we didn't have uh, anything other than a police radio in the cars. Now today, we have a fully functioning internet capable um, mobile communication client, and we're able to uh, access uh, all kinds of uh, emergency services software uh, within the car without even having to come back to the office. I, I remember I'm a former police officer in Norristown, and we wanted to check a license. We had to call into the sergeant, and the sergeant would have to look at it a book. You know, there was a, the state would send down a book every uh, once a year or so, you know. All that is all that is web-based now, and the officers have instant access to it within their right inside the car. Yeah. Well, Chief, congratulations okay. and thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you very much. There's been Chief Potts down for about the last 15. And, uh, what's this mean to you? A, a building like this with all this communication and up, you know, a high, what do you call it, the top shelf? Yeah, it uh, it gives us. Uh, a lot better operating capabilities on the street. That uh, the technology makes the job a lot easier, a lot safer. You work with like uh, communicate with ambulance, policemen, the whole bit. Absolutely, all three services. The interconnection and the uh, as the catchword is today, interoperability is uh, fantastic. How many uh, men in your department? Well, we've got we got 12 career people and about 40 volunteers. Oh, I see. It's volunteer and career. Okay. Yes. Now I'm meet fire chief from Lowell Marion Fire Department. Okay. That's right. Chief Charles J. McGarvey, Lowell Marion Fire Department. What's your name again? Charles J. McGarvey. Okay. Now, what's this mean to you? This building. Oh, I think it's a great addition to the whole public safety, you know, system in the county here, and um, you know, it helps us all to work closer together, and, and brings us into one. Absolutely. Communications between the different boroughs and municipalities it definitely help us out. Uh, a big step forward, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Looking very forward to working with everyone here. Okay. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, now I want you to meet a good friend, a former Norristown police officer. Uh, now he's a judge, uh, district court judge. He's a court judge, judge, right? Yes. Right. And, um, and tell us your name. All right, Jim Gallagher, and uh, yes, I'm the district court judge over in uh, Bridgeport, Upper Marion, but I'm also an assistant fire chief with the uh, King of Prussia Fire Company, okay. and uh, that's why I'm up here. Okay. And uh, this is this addition. This is absolutely fantastic. Tell us uh, what, what it means, like to you as a fire 
it you gives know. us a, a level of comfort when we're out in the field. When we're out in the field, there's a level of comfort knowing that what the information is and the professionals and the people that are on the other end of our radio, when we talk to the folks up here at the communication center and the information they have available to us. For instance, this last weekend, we're out in a tractor trailer that overturned on the expressway. And the folks had all the information up here. We were able to get it relayed to us, along with the fire we recently had at Town and Country Apartments that Chief O'Donnell in Norristown had. They sent in, uh, everything was just right here, and then able to get some people on the road to come down and help us out. But uh, this is state of the art. Absolutely state of the art. It's a model for the rest of the country. Communication for, for a regional communication center and operations center uh, from Montgomery County, because now you have all these agencies, police, fire, EMS, emergency management, and public safety officials working all together in the same building. It's absolutely that, fantastic. That fire in Norristown, I understand they're going to get federal money to take care of the people. I understand. Yes, FEMA, FEMA has stepped in. They have some uh, funds available, but I think what Chief O'Donnell's working on it. a certain amount of people that uh, get injured or how serious the uh, fire is? Or? Yeah, it has to do with, yes, it, it, the number of people and what the disruption that has caused to the community yeah, itself. Yeah, so, right, right. Okay, it's a localized effort there with, with FEMA. Well, I'm proud of you. We Thanks, Rock. A judge I appreciate fire. it, Rock. What, what else are you going to be? You gotta be uh, <laughs> I'm the ambassador in Northtown now, you know? <laughs> yes, I do know that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Take care now. Thanks a lot. Right. <laughs> mind when I worked at the uh, communications uh, office uh, he was still you were there right and you're still here yes. and so now tell me your name and, and what you do okay sure rock my name is David Brown and I uh, I've been here about 18 years with Montgomery County I started in public safety in the emergency medical services uh, division and uh, well, I currently work with the PennDOT traffic cameras I work with training paramedics and emergency medical technicians uh, with the ambulance services, also with the fire companies and the voluntary rescue, and uh, we work closely with the 911 dispatchers and the rest of the public safety staff. But your, your, your main purpose is what? Mostly medical. We do most of the things with the training for the paramedics and the EMTs. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's most of the training. The paramedic training is several hundred hours now, and uh, we basically bring the emergency room right to your doorstep. So if you're having some type of medical emergency or a car crash, the paramedics are responding with sophisticated equipment, same equipment that doctors and nurses use, and uh, they're treating you right where you're uh, injured. And then whether you need to go to a local hospital or right to a trauma center with a helicopter, oh, they'll fly you right. The helicopter. You, you with that? Yes, we are connected with the helicopter services. We're responsible to license the helicopters and their crews to make sure they carry the right medical equipment and they will take patients back to their uh, trauma center, which will have specialty doctors and nurses available 24 hours a day, ready to treat them for their significant injuries. So if you arrive in a trauma center within an hour, you have a much better chance of surviving a critical incident. Well, uh, I like to bring our crew here from Northtown High School. Uh, when you have a helicopter here to see the inside, it's almost like a little, uh, like a receiving ward in the hospital, right? Yes, the helicopters inside are, are very short for space, but they are exactly almost like a critical care bed in a hospital, and they have sophisticated equipment that is treating that patient from the minute they pick them up at the scene and while they're in flight until they arrive at the helipad at the hospital. Well, I'm proud of you. You know, we worked together years ago, and, uh, and uh, you're doing a good job, and thanks God our tax money is, <laughs> is paying your wage, and I'm glad that you're getting paid with my tax money. <laughs> So, okay, well, thanks thank a lot. Thanks, okay. Now I want you to meet the man that put it all together, the Director of Public Safety here in Montgomery County, Tom Sullivan. Tom, Tom I must, this must be the proudest moment of your life here. You've had two big uh, the shooting range, pistol range, and this. So tell me something about it here. You well, it's been hold a, the mic and tell us all about it. Hank, it's been a busy oh, year. Okay. Uh, we've uh, completed a number of major projects, and this is the flagship of the Public Safety Department. Um, it's been several years in coming. Um, a lot of great work done by our staff, by the public property people, um, lots of help from the prisoners, everybody in the county government. Um, we've added 9,000 square feet. Uh, the critical systems of this building, the dispatch center, the radio equipment, the emergency operations center is 16 and a half feet underground. And we've added onto that um, the business section, the training section as well. So the, the, the critical facilities are secured. Um, we have facilities now to increase our staff. We, our call volume is, continues to grow. And with cell phones, it's it never stops. This interwinds with uh, with police, with fire. 
That's correct. We, that's right. We dispatch all the uh, fire and ambulance agencies in the county and most of the police departments. And uh, the call volume is, is terrific. We're dispatching uh, about 600,000 police calls a year and about 90,000 fire and EMS calls. Uh, so the calls never really stop. And uh, we need additional people, and the commissioners have granted us additional positions for next year. Um, so we're looking for, for good quality people that want to apply. Okay. And uh, we can use uh, probably about 25 additional yeah, positions. Come on, commercial, go ahead. You're, you're looking for Absolutely. Help. Come call the Public Safety Department at 610 631 6500. Get an application, and uh, we really need some, some high quality people. We have a testing process uh, to see if people have the ability to work in a team, to multitask, uh, to work with computers. And it's a very rewarding job. It's a high stress job. It's uh, 12 hour shifts. The calls never Do stop. To dispatch? To take 911 calls and dispatch. Okay. And I'm going to use that on my show. I'm going to remind people we need uh, volunteers for dispatchers. Okay? Thank you very much, Tom. And congratulations, wonderful job.